The Quran states that Allah is forgiving. What is the limit of forgiveness? There is no limit. Almighty God mentioned to us in the Hadith of Qudsi that His forgiveness is the greatest of all of His attributes. And also, yes, God is loving. Al Wadud, Al Wadud, the loving. Yes, God is loving, but He is also Hamim. Tanzil al Kitab min Allah al Aziz al Alim. غافل الذنب وقابل التوب شديد لقاب التوب لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير. So Almighty God is not just loving and He is not just forgiving, but He is also swift in taking account. He is also the punisher. He is also the one that is able to hold humanity accountable. So he's not just a loving God, a relenting God, a redeeming God, a forgiving God. He's a God that also holds us accountable and will judge us and will hold us responsible for the gift that he has given us. That is also his attribute. Question. It is quite clear that Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him as a person, had a great impact on the world. Do you believe Islam as a religion revolutionized the world? The history is already clear. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was a shepherd who himself was unlettered. He never went to school. He never learned to read. He was never taught to read. He was never educated. Yet this Quran was revealed in 23 years. And after the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, passed away, the whole of Arabia was under Islam, but that's nothing. There were three existing empires at the time, Rome, Persia, Abyssinia. Twenty-three years after the Quran was revealed, Rome, Persia, Abyssinia became part of the Muslim empire. And that is nothing. For 1,000 years, the Islamic Empire, the Islamic civilization ruled the whole world. 1,000 years. This came from what? A revelation that a desert Arab received, who himself was illiterate, unlearned, in the desert that no one considered even a thought, an idea, a consideration. This itself is a phenomenon that we can only attribute to the profundance of the God's Word. Islam still has the resilience and the power to reform the world. Not under the sword, but under the command of Almighty God, because Islam, as I mentioned before, is a legislation. And that's why it became and can be a world government. It is not just a book to be read like poetry. It is not just an abstract book to be written for appreciation. It's a law, it's a book of revelation, inspiration, and legislation. Someone asked, your wife asked if non Muslims can meet up with you afterwards. Oh, this is my wife asked. Certainly. Um, I think that there's some um, I think that there's some space uh, upstairs, and if it's appropriate uh, with the um, the rules of the, uh, the the owners of this establishment, uh, yes, when we meet from here, I don't mind to meet um, in a designated place for 20 minutes or so with some non-Muslims. Now, Muslims, please, if you brought or invited some non-Muslims. Please don't show up 30, 40, or 50 of you with a non-Muslim and want to sit there too. I ask the brothers who are organizing here to um, escort any non-Muslim who has a question, an inquiry, or a comment that they would like to make with me to a place where I can suitably meet with them and talk with them in reasonable quiet. Because it's only fair. 
that if they ask, I should take the time to do that. And I'll set aside 20 minutes or 30 minutes to do that with her, some non-Muslims who want to meet with me, certainly. Having faults in the past and being a single mother, can I become a good Muslim? Certainly. And how do you start? You start by saying, La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. This is how you start. You start by taking the first step. Not because Muslims expect you to do it, because I guarantee you this, that if all the non-Muslims in here became Muslims tonight, formally, Khalid will not get a thousand dollars a head. No benefit will come to me for that, except the benefit that God gives for guiding somebody, for opening up the treasure of Islam to somebody, for, sh for being willing to share the information with somebody. That's the reward that we're looking for. The gift is yours. And if you're feeling it, do what you have to do while you're feeling it. Because the way the world is, the world is like a roller coaster. Tomorrow, you may not feel it. Take advantage of the inspiration when it comes to you. Because sometimes in life, the way the world is, inspiration is few and far between. You know that, don't you? That person who wrote that, I hope that you will be one of the people that will meet with me when we leave from this uh, room. If Jesus was not sent to the Samaritans and the Gentiles, bearing in mind that Jesus' message was to prophesize about the Comforter, why was this so? Why wouldn't God want every tribe to know about the coming of the Comforter? Well, if you know the nature of Scripture, you'll, you'll know that. God sent a prophet from among the Bani Israel. All the prophets came from a designated group of people, all the way from Moses, Abraham, all the way up. They came from a designated group of people in the beginning. But every prophet came only to a tribe, only to a specific people. This was God's way, his determination. God guided the world through a tribe. A group of people designated to be prophets until finally God sent a person, a prophet, a messenger, from also a tribe, but not to that tribe, but to the whole world. This comforter, Jesus Christ, his specific purpose was to put in check and correct the excesses and the deviations of the Bani Israel, and then to announce the good news of a comforter. Now, why God chose Jesus Christ to speak of that comforter? That's God's business. That is the fact. Such is the words of Jesus Christ that reflects that, and such is the words of Muhammad and the revelation that came to Muhammad Shalom that confirms that. What I would invite you to do is, to look closely at the life of Jesus Christ, the real documented life of Jesus Christ, and the life of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, and see how they interlock. Read the message of Jesus Christ, the real gospel of Jesus Christ, to the best of your ability. As a matter of fact, I point you to the gospel of St. Barnabas. Now, you won't find that in the popular New Testament, because that's five books that's called the Apocrypha. Apocrypha means expunged, canceled, because at the Council of Nicaea in 354, years after Jesus Christ, the Romans at the Council of Nicaea, they decided that there were five books that they didn't want to include in the New Testament. The Gospel of Barnabas, who was the blind companion of Jesus Christ, was not included in the New Testament. But if you go to the Gospel of Barnabas, again, go to your computer and punch in the word Barnabas. And then add to it Saint Barnabas. And you'll find that his genealogy and you'll find that his history and his biography was that he was the blind companion of Jesus Christ. 